Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. Today I'd like to discuss several releases that I've been checking out this Halloween. So we're going to start off with the godfather of Halloween and heavy metal, that being King Diamond and his most recent EP, Masquerade of Madness. Now the song Masquerade of Madness was a single put out back in like 2019, and I thought that would be a sneak peek for a full-length album. But that was five years ago, and that album seems nowhere on, uh, on the horizon. But that being said, I think Masquerade of Madness was a better song than pretty much everything on the several King Diamond full lengths that preceded it. So definitely promising. This is, uh, again, an EP on white vinyl. Beyond that single song, it's got live versions from 2016 of Welcome Home from them. And Arrival off of Abigail. Also comes with this cool Halloween mask with the lyrics for Masquerade of Madness on the back. King Diamond, he's coming to Toronto next month. I wish it was October and not November for obvious reasons, but I've been slacking on picking up my ticket. I think I need to be there, but uh, we'll see what happens. Sticking with the Halloween theme, we have the brand new album by Deceased, Children of the Morgue, on Hell's Headbangers. I also got the uh, company poster up there in the corner. And this is their first album since 2018. It sure doesn't feel like it. That just felt, it feels like a couple years ago. But I'm going to give this one a 4.5 out of 5. Definitely not a disappointment at all. Uh, at first, I thought the opener, Children of the Morgue, was a little bit too repetitive on the chorus front, but it's grown on me. I like how the last song, Farewell, kind of loops back around to the opening song, Children of the Morgue. I think there's about four interludes, which you usually don't hear on deceased albums. I think Fearless Undead Machines had a couple. But otherwise, it's kind of a new thing for them. But they don't interrupt the flow at all. In fact, I think it adds to it. And if I had to pick just uh, three of my favorite songs in here, I'm going to go with Tear Not, The Reaper Is Nesting, and Fed to Mother Earth. It's definitely keeping with the deceased style of the last several years. And I've listened to all my deceased albums this fall. I do every year. But I thought I would take uh, some special attention on the three albums that I always consider to be while great, their weakest. Blueprints for Madness, As a Weird Travel On, and the most recent one up until the new one, uh, Ghastly White. So I had this one at the bottom of my little mini ranking I did. I think I was wrong. Uh, I just don't think I spent enough time with this album. I always thought Mrs. Allardyce was a very strong opener, and the rest was solid but unmemorable. Spinning that three more times this past month, uh, I really fell in love with this album. And I think it's uh, kind of middle of the pack of their discography now. I'd say my, my two lowest are As a Weird Travel On, which, while great, just couldn't really hold a candle to Supernatural Addiction and Fearless and Dead Machines, the two classic albums that preceded it. And I would say currently, The Blueprints for Madness is my least favorite. It's definitely their most unique album. It's not the heaviest, but I would say it's the most like ferocious and rabid. But uh, a great release, nonetheless. So stepping outside of the Halloween theme a bit, but an, al uh, an album that brings uh, a lot of fall memories back is The Shadow Throne, the second full-length album by Satyricon. Get, to the, uh, get back to the album in a minute, but this is definitely one of uh, the best finds I've found all year. Because the vinyl copy, the original vinyl copy of this, I think is one of the most highly priced black metal releases on Discogs. And I think a used CD copy of this album generally will run you about $100. But I found this at a used CD store for $15. It's the original... 1994 Moonfog, uh, Moonfog version. I was really happy to find that. Um, my favorite songs in here are probably In the Mist by the Hills 
and Woods to Eternity. I always um, love Satyricon. I found them the most folky of the or, original classic Norwegian bands. But also a band that I kind of took the least seriously when it comes to just having like straightforward Austin metal songs. But that's not what they do. Um, definitely more of an atmospheric thing. And speaking of which, the opening song on this album really brought me back to De no De off the first Arcturus album. So I went to look up like which album came first and they were both released within a couple months of each other in 1994. So don't know what's going on there. But the Shadow Throne, great black metal album for fall. And uh, speaking of Satyricon and Halloween, uh, the last Satyricon full length, uh, Deep Call Upon Deep. I thought that album was great. A lot of people didn't like it, but uh, Tear Brethren in the Dark, that's kind of a cool Halloween song. And that newest Satyricon release, I don't really consider it an album. It's like a, an ambient thing done with like an artist. If you put that on and tell yourself it's Halloween music, it's definitely uh, pretty fitting. I recommend you check that out. I forget what it was called. But my favorite Satyricon album will always be the album after that, the third one, Nemesis Divina. I liked Rebel Extravaganza at the time, but when I look back, I definitely don't like it as much as I used to. Saw Satyricon Live once, maybe eight years ago. It was apparently their last North American tour. I think Panzerfaust was opening, and glad I made it. So my last video, I looked at a couple of things I got out of the Metalhead box, so I finally gave those a couple of listens in the car. We're going to start off with Vanek. I guess this album is called Four. I listened to this in the out uh, in the car a couple times, and my favorite tracks were definitely five, Devour Melody, and seven, Trapped. I thought those songs just had the the best riffs and were the most fun. When I talked about them in the last video, I think I called them like punky Halloween, black metal. No, definitely not a black metal band. I'm not sure why I said that. I. I mentioned that there's at least one live member of Midnight in this lineup. I think it's the main guy. And if I had to say the way Vanix sounds, it's definitely... Um, on this album, I'd say early Metallica meets Misfits meets uh, Midnight. A lot of fun. I like the intro and the outro as well they add to the album. And a fun release. That's uh, the preceding Vanek album, number three. And finally, we're going to close it off with VHS. Um, Halloween Treats, Demo, Splits, and Ghoulish Delights. I've heard of this band before, but I never checked them out. They're from Thunder Bay, Ontario. Same province I live in, but I have never been to Thunder Bay in my life. I think that's like a it's like a ten hour drive or something way up north. I've never been north of Sudbury. So what do we have here? Uh, lots of movie samples, a mix of death metal, thrash, punk, a little bit of hair metal, a little bit of grindcore. Is it a fun listen? Yes. Will I ever listen to it again? To be honest, unlikely. But what were my favorite tracks on here? I liked uh, number seven, Hairspray and Blood Spray, and 19, Killer Waves 2 theme. Those are my two favorite tracks on here. And that's it for me today. Hopefully we uh, touch base before Halloween, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.